Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Daily Forex Market Analysis. Right now is the May 3rd of 2019, and yesterday, if you remember, I was, uh, or if you were watching this Daily Forex Market Analysis on a Thursday, I actually got engaged into this bad pattern. Right now, currently, the price action is still around, moving on a sideways, basically, since my entry. Uh, on, it's moving sideways, and we are uh, playing with my entry price point. So we were, uh, it rolled over, it pushed up, it rolled over, pushed up, rolled over, pushed up, and so here we are around the break even currently. What I see when I'm when I'm looking at it is basically that the the RSI is slowly falling down. So I do expect and I do hope, as I said yesterday in the video as well, that the price action will just you know roll over and hit my targets one and then eventually targets two. But it also can be like from the looks of it, it could be accumulation and the RSI could be falling down just to find the uh, just to find the bars and then the bar bars will push the price action up. Uh, now we will see what's going to happen. I'm just not going to touch it. I, I'm not going to touch it. I will wait and see, and then we will see from there. Uh, now, with that being said, let's go to the Aussie CAD. Let's check out: Do we have anything on the Aussie CAD? From the looks of it right now, no, not 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 in this time frame. And I'm trading the patterns only on this one, so I will just be skipping this one. Aussie USD. What do we have here? So from yesterday, I was keep looking and checking: Do we have a kind of a some kind of a pattern here? We did not get anything, so I don't see any chances of opportunity. Nothing has changed today as well price action is still moving sideways in my opinion we did not break the crucial low and we will see well, where will we go from there it's friday so i'm not expecting much movement today euro dollar euro dollar euro dollar i believe today's uh yeah guys today's fomc so it's not a it's probably price action will have drastic movements when the fomc happens when the news comes up but I'm not trading FOMC. Maybe that's why we don't see a lot of movement right now because everybody are waiting in reaction from the market when the FOMC news comes out. We will see what's going to happen with it. Um, Euro dollar. Euro dollar. Yeah, not, not, guys, I don't see. I don't see. Maybe a cipher. This being our X like, so this would be our completion point. We can see is that uh, we have a two leg cipher for X to A, A to B. Yeah, it might be one. No, no, we did not extend enough. We will see. We might extend by the end of this today. By the end of today. Okay. So no cipher for us. Pound dollar. Nothing. Still nothing for pound dollar. Nothing that I can see off. If you see different, please post a comment below. Also, don't forget to click the like button, share the video, and subscribe if you're new to this channel. But now let's move to the pound yen. Uh, pound yen, okay, this is a big surfer. Uh, what else? An hour four, nothing. Hour one, bam, bam, bam. This was the violation of my bad pattern. That was not a bad pattern. So, bam, bam. And I, I have nothing on the pound yen as well. And that's it, guys. That's our pre-market analysis. Uh, it, sometimes we go really quickly through this, and uh, it's because I do this each and every day. You know, I do it in the morning, and then I watch the market the entire day when I catch the time every hour or so. And then I do the post-market analysis. I mean, the post-work market analysis while markets are still moving. And you know, you co constantly adjust your um, predictions and your analysis. So. It makes you you go quickly through the markets and trading gets really really boring in my opinion because you just gotta do what you gotta do and this is show up do this do this do this wait for opportunities and take them if they show up with that being said i want to point out one more little thing as you can see on the screen right now there is an ebook that i wrote for the past few months i spent time most of the weekends writing this book sharing everything that i wish i knew when i was first starting out it's called how to start your forex trading journey I included everything there so that you don't need to uh, repeat the mistakes like I did, that I did, like uh, blowing up many accounts, joining many signal services, copier services, scam, scams, and all of the bad teaching people that are just trying to lure you in, in the, their forex broker so that they get a commission from a broker. Uh, all of that and a little bit more like backtesting sheet and a video tutorial, some kind of a strategies, very profitable ones that I use here on these videos that can kickstart your trading journey, I include in the book. 
So if you are willing to check it out, please click on the link below or you can see it in the screen. So type it up in Google and my uh, uh, website will pop up here. You're free to join our community and get the ebook. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching the morning session and hope to see you soon in the afternoon session. Take care and bye bye. All right, so here we are in our afternoon session after work on this beautiful Friday, the 3rd of May 2019. And as we predicted and as we shared in the morning session, our bad pattern on the USD CAD completed and it got us slowly out of our, we are slowly getting out of, out of the drawdown and I want to share the bad pattern here with you guys. So this is the one that we took. I did share it in the morning session, but now when we, when it won, Ah, it's nice to share it again. So what happened today is the price action didn't move much, you know, so we had just basically we were moving sideways in this kind of a small, very, very tight range all the way to the FOMC. FOMC statement that comes out every first Friday in the month came out and a lot of people on social media were actually thinking that USD CAD will go up. I've seen quite a few posts that who is buying with me USD CAD, etc., etc. And luckily for us, our strategy allowed us to stay in a trade because as you can see here on a stop loss, we our stop loss was right above, a few pips above, actually five, six, five pips above the wick that FOMC News got our wick five pips to close, uh, almost to hit our stop loss. But that didn't happen. Then the sellers got in, price action never violated our crucial X point and we were able to get a... Uh, to, we were able to hit both targets basically within like two hours, three hours. So it this spike up did uh, cost us like 15 pips because I had to trail my target. So from this price point here that you can see right now, give me a sec. From this price point, my targets had to go up like 10 pips or so to this price point, and the targets too had to go up five five pips. But you, but you know what? We did close a nice 60, 66 pips or so for uh for total targets one and targets two. So that was a very nice trade. I did cover it in the morning session. I, I showed you yesterday's video where we got in the entry in the candle. We were like entering a bad pattern. We were like in a how how long? 24 or almost a day actually a day into uh, exactly a day into this pattern and we got out of it uh, for 60 pips so win is a win is a win and I'm, I'm kind of happy to finally get this kind of winner that I, I was waiting for because you know the drawdown kind of got to me uh, but I did stick to my plan I did stick to my backtester rule so I, it was a good trade very very good trade so besides this there was nothing much in the market as we covered in the morning session. There is one thing here on Euro dollar. We did not get actually a cipher pattern. I did I did mark this up as a reminder that I gotta show you. So basically what happened is oh sorry. What happened is this look. So we got X to A, A to B, but the price action rolled over a little bit too much and we closed beyond our C point, which got us which is then an invalid cipher pattern. No pound dollar. This is what we got on a pound dollar. FOMC news got you no know, a huge spike, huge rally in the market to the upside, and then we have a pound yen also very similar moving to the pound dollar, huge rally up to the upside. And with that being said, basically that's it, guys. That's everything that I have to share in terms of the this week's entire week's analysis. Uh, we did took a one trading mistake basically which was on the pound yen, the bad pattern that was another bad pattern that we got violation because of this this, this price action here violated our B point. So we had X to A, A to B, B to C, actually our C point and CD, which was not a CD, but then we got a Garfield. So again, we did, we did make a mistake, but it was not that big of a deal at the end of the day. Uh, besides this, I did connect my, M, uh, what is it? What's, what's, what's my FX book? so that you can transparently see my equity curve every time I take a trade. I will include a link uh, below this video in the description. In the description, you will also see a link of my newly written ebook that I shared everything about in the morning session. So I don't want to do it uh, repeatedly like each and every time I record a morning and afternoon session. But I want to remind you, if you didn't already, hit that like button, smash the bell button, and also consider subscribing if you're new to this channel. This kind of a content I do quite a few times per week when you get some kind of an action in the market. And back to the equity curve, guys. So this is what actual real trading is all about, you know. 
Uh, we were actually, we started this year with a drawdown and we got out of the drawdown for a total of 1.13% up. And since that, since that equity high of 1.13%, which was on March 4th, we didn't get a new equity high. We were basically moving sideways all the way till we, we had to go in a drawdown on April 12th. The April was a terrible month for me, as you can see. And now in May, we got our first winning trade of 66 pips, I believe. Uh, 65, where, did, where can I see pips here? Uh, oh, there we go, 66.1 pip on this last trade, which is pretty decent winner. And what I'm seeing from this equity curve is I'm actually expecting to go out uh, to break, break, break above this equity high and actually got a new equity high by the end of this year, probably get up to 10 to or 15%, but you never know. We will definitely see. Overall, I'm down like 3%, but the thing that you also need to take in consideration is that uh, even though uh, in total for the first, uh, what, four or five months, I'm down only minus 130 pips, my average winner is bigger than my average loser. So eventually my I'm winning around 55, 55, 60% of times in my backtested system. Actually, I think it's 53, I don't know, on top of my head. So if I keep winning and my winners are bigger than my losers, you know, it equity curve should, should go up and I should be green for the entire year. But that's something that we will definitely see. And with that, uh, with that being said, I just want to wrap up this week with kind of good news with this new uh, winner on the USD CAD. Wish you, uh, you know, relaxed weekend. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much for staying until the end of this video. Uh, if you didn't already, click that subscribe button, smash the bell button, smash the like button, and speak to you soon. Thank you and bye-bye.